everybody, how's it going? I'm Paul, I'm with the Dicey Review, and today we're going to be looking at the two or four player game, Guardians, from Plaid Hat Games. Guardians comes with all of the components that you see here, including 10 hero decks, including the hero themselves, their ultimate card, and their power decks. Four basic decks containing six cards each, two double-sided faction cards, one location deck consisting of 14 locations, 24 double-sided damage tokens, 18 charge tokens, four control markers, 18 condition tokens, and two condition and control token summary cards. Guardians can either be played as a two or a four player game. We're going to look at how to set up and play the two player game first. To begin setup, randomly determine a player to be the first player. This player will choose a Loyalist or a Renegade faction card and put it in their play area. Their opponent will receive the other faction card. Then deal eight random hero cards into the center of the table. Beginning with the second player, each player alternates in choosing one hero at a time until both players have chosen three heroes. The two leftover heroes will be returned to the box. For the first game of Guardians, the rulebook recommends that players skip this draft and instead, one player is given Whiplash, Valkyrie, and Astra, and the other player is given Ronin, Grave, and Mauler. Then, each player will collect the basic deck consisting of two Intel, two Barrier, and two Reposition, and shuffles them together with the power decks of all of the different characters they've selected. You can tell which cards relate to which character because it will have their portrait in the top left corner. Make sure not to shuffle the character's ultimate cards or the character cards themselves when doing this. After shuffling your cards together to make a 24 card draw deck, each player will place the ultimate cards of their selected hero face up in their play area. Next, shuffle the location cards together to form a location deck and then deal out the top four cards from this deck into the middle of the play area. Each location will have a point value listed in the middle of the card. When setting up locations at the beginning of the game, there can't be more than two location cards with the same point value. So for instance, if a third value 2 location were here, you would simply remove this location and replace it with another from the top of the location deck. Once the correct location setup is in the middle of the table, take any of the cards that were removed and shuffle them back into the location deck. Then place a control marker in the center space of each location's control track. Then place the damage and condition tokens in separate piles within reach of all players. Beginning with the first player, players will now alternate placing a hero at one of the locations that they choose. Each location has an ability that may take effect whenever characters move to these locations or whenever the locations are scored. It's important to note that when placing the characters during the setup, these abilities don't take place. The rulebook also suggests playing without the location abilities for your first game. Then, each player draws a starting hand of five cards. Players can choose to shuffle the entire hand back into the deck and draw a new starting hand of five cards, but the second hand must be kept. Now you're ready to play. The first player will take the first turn. Normally during a player's action phase they can take three actions, but the first player will take two actions in their very first turn. Each player's turn consists of five phases that have to be completed in order. The first step of a turn is the control phase. During the game, players will take actions that cause their heroes to be in a readied state or in an exhausted state. During the control phase, players will be able to move control markers at locations where they have characters if they control a readied hero at that location and their opponent doesn't. So for instance, this player controls Whiplash at this location, she's in a ready state, and the opponent has no character there. That means that during the control phase, this marker would move towards this player. If a player controls a readied hero at a location, and their opponent controls a hero that is exhausted, the control marker will move as well. In the example of these two locations, these two heroes are readied, but the opponent also controls readied heroes. In this instance, the control marker doesn't move. The next phase of a player's turn is the ready phase. During the ready phase, a player is able to ready all exhausted heroes they control. Let's say, for instance, that the character Valkyrie was exhausted from a previous action or effect. During the ready phase, the player would be able to ready the exhausted hero. During the ready phase, after readying all exhausted characters, a player would be able to place any previously knocked out characters at any of the four locations. So, for instance, if Valkyrie had been knocked out due to a previous effect or attack, 
Valkyrie would be able to be placed at any of the four locations. After the ready phase, players will complete the action phase. During the action phase, players are allowed to complete up to three actions. A player is able to complete the same action more than once on their turn. Let's look at each action in detail. The first action a player can take on their turn is to draw. To take a draw action, a player simply draws the top card from their draw deck and adds it to their hand. The next action a player can take is to move. To take a move action, a player can select one of their readied heroes and move that hero to an adjacent location. It's important to note that adjacency for locations doesn't wrap around, so for instance, this location would not be adjacent to this location. It's also important to note that there are no limits on the amount of characters that can be at a location. So for instance, this character could move to the same location as Astra. Also, when moving, make sure to check the location text to see if there are any abilities at this location that are activated by moving. For instance, the armory states that after a hero moves to this location, the controlling player can draw a card. It's also important to note that there are some cards and some abilities that will allow a character to move. A character does not have to be readied in order to be moved in this way. For instance, Whiplash's ability will allow Whiplash to move a character one location towards Whiplash. The player would be able to use this ability to move Valkyrie one location towards Whiplash, even though Valkyrie is not readied. The next action a player could take on their turn would be to attack with a character. Each character has a health value and an attack value. When attacking, choose a readied hero you control to attack with. Then you'll choose one of your opponent's characters that's at the same location as your chosen character. Place damage tokens on the targeted character equal to the attack value of your character. If the damage on a character ever meets or exceeds its health value, the character will be knocked out. We'll look at that here in a moment. Finally, exhaust the character that you attacked with. When a character is knocked out, a number of things will happen. First, the control marker at this character's location will be moved two spaces towards the player who knocked the hero out. So for instance, if this hero is knocked out, this hero's opponent gains two influence. Then, the player who controls the knocked out character removes all tokens from the character and then removes that character from play. It's important to note that knocked out heroes will come back during the next ready phase of this player's turn. The next action that a player can take on their turn is to activate either a card or a location that has an action cost symbol. Many cards and some locations will have action cost symbols. A player can resolve a card or a location ability with an action cost symbol as one of the three actions on their turn. Some cards will also have a ready symbol in the top left corner, meaning that the hero that relates to this card must be ready in order to play this card. For instance, Crippling Shot requires that Astra be ready. Currently, Astra is exhausted for this player, so they would not be able to play this card from their hand. When playing a card, the player simply resolves the text on the card. For instance, this card says that if a friendly hero is exhausted, Valkyrie can attack. After Valkyrie attacks, you would be able to ready a hero other than Valkyrie. After resolving a text on a card, the card would be discarded to the player's discard pile. Some cards will also show a charge symbol in the middle of the card. If a card shows a charge symbol, when this card is played, the player would be allowed to place one charge token on one of their three ultimate cards. When a player places a charge token on an ultimate card, they're one step closer to being able to play this card. In addition to taking up an action and requiring that the corresponding hero be readied, the ultimate cards also have a charge token requirement. So for instance, to play Arc Strike, two charge tokens would have to be on this card. However, if the charge token requirement is met, the corresponding hero is ready, and you have an available action, a player can activate an ultimate card on their turn to resolve a very powerful effect. Ultimate cards can only be activated once per game. When an ultimate card is activated, the player will remove the charge tokens, resolve the effect on the ultimate card, and resolve any charge symbols if available, and then the card will be turned face down to indicate that it can't be used again this game. There are some cards and hero abilities that don't cost an action on a player's turn. For instance, each player will have a utility card for each of their heroes in their deck. As you can see, utility cards have no cost requirements in the top left, meaning that this card can be played in addition to one of the three standard actions on a player's turn. There are some character abilities that also require no actions. Some characters have an exhaust ability. 
To resolve an exhaust ability, a player simply exhausts the character who has the ability and then resolves the ability's effect. Completing an exhaust ability will not count as one of the three actions on a player's turn. Finally, each hero will have a reaction card. Reaction cards can be played at any time, even on an opponent's turn. To play a reaction card, the specific requirements in the card's text have to be met. For instance, Valkyrie's reaction card, Vengeance, specifies that a player can only use this card after a friendly hero other than Valkyrie is knocked out. If this situation occurs, the card can be played. Some cards or abilities will place condition tokens on either heroes you control or heroes that your opponent controls. For instance, this card says to immobilize one enemy and then draw a card. This card says to put a shield token on a hero that you control. This card will allow Whiplash to take a special ability and then power locks an opponent's hero. When a hero has a shield token on it, this hero would be immune to any damage that would normally be dealt to it. At the start of the next action phase, the player controlling this hero would discard this token. If a hero has an immobilized token on it, the hero cannot be moved by any means. This token would be removed at the end of the controlling player's action phase. If a hero is power locked, the controlling player wouldn't be able to play any power or ultimate cards for this hero. The hero would still be able to attack or move, and this power lock token would be removed at the end of this player's action phase. After taking up to three actions during the action phase, a player would move on to the score phase. If during the score phase there are any locations that have the control marker in your faction space, you will score this location. To score a location, take the location and place it in your player area. Then draw a new location from the location deck and place it face up in the play area. Replace the control marker in the middle of the card's control track. The heroes that were previously at this location will remain at the new location. Some location cards will have scoring text. Make sure and check the card that you're scoring and resolve any scoring text if you need to. The final phase of a player's turn is the draw phase. During the draw phase, a player will draw one card and add it to their hand. At this time, if the player has more than eight cards in hand, they would need to discard down to eight cards. A player's hand limit is only checked during the draw phase. If at any point during the game, whether it be during the draw phase or by taking a draw action, a player's draw pile is empty, they can shuffle their discard pile to form a new draw deck and then complete the action. After completing all five of these phases, it would then be your opponent's turn. They would then take their turn, completing the same five phases in the same order. The game will end immediately as soon as one player is able to score a location that gives them at least nine total points. The player with nine points will immediately win. Guardians can also be played as a four-player game. To play a four-player game, follow all of the same rules for the two-player game with the following changes. The first change is that players will be grouped into two separate teams. So one team of two will play another team of two. Teams will draft heroes as normal until each team has drafted four heroes. Each player will control two heroes during the game. These heroes are assigned to a player as they are drafted. Each player, once they've been assigned two heroes, will shuffle together the two power decks of their chosen heroes with six cards from the basic deck. This will form an 18 card draw deck for each player on both teams. Then teams will alternate placing their heroes at a location one at a time. Each player will draw a starting hand of four cards instead of five. The mulligan rule remains the same in this team variant. Gameplay will happen as normal with the following changes. Teams will take turns together instead of each individual player taking a turn. During the control phase, if there are more readied heroes at a location than an opponent, the control marker will move. If a hero is knocked out at a location, the control marker will only move one space instead of two. During the action phase, each player on a team now takes two actions instead of three actions. Each player on a team can take the two actions in any order, and the number of actions taken doesn't change for the first team's turn. It's important to note that one player on a team can't resolve a card with a charge token on it and place the charge token on their teammate's ultimate card. Whenever a team scores a location with a score effect, each team member of that team will take the effect's bonus separately. During the draw phase, both players of a team will draw one card from the top of their deck. Players are allowed to openly share information with their teammates, but they cannot show each other their cards. 
If one team scores nine points together, that team will immediately win. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. That was our video. We hope that it was helpful and we hope that it was informative. If you still have any questions about how to play the game, please comment below or email us directly at thediceyreview at gmail.com. If you want to hear more from the Dicey Review, you can listen to the Dicey Review podcast. It can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, Tuned In, SoundCloud, or pretty much any podcast app. You can read our written reviews at thediceyreview.com, and make sure and follow us on social media or connect with us at our Board Game Geek Guild. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, we'll see you at the table.